Hello, and welcome to another RPD video. In this video, we'll be talking about RPD framework try-in. Frameworks can be evaluated on the cast and interorally. On the cast, there should be no spaces between the framework and the cast. Rests should fully and passively seat in their rest seats. Retentive clasps should also be fully adapted onto the abutment teeth. However, it's normal to see some scratches above them, as they result from the repeated insertion and removal of the framework in the lab. In the mouth, the framework should fully seat passively. Perfect adaptation should be seen in all rests, retentive clasps, and lingual plates. However, it's not uncommon for frameworks to need some adjustments, including fit adjustments, clasp adjustments, and occlusal adjustments. Let's start with adjustments to the fit of the RPD. Areas of premature contact that can cause incomplete seating of RPDs can be detected using disclosing wax or occlude. Let's go over how to use disclosing wax first. A little piece of wax is taken onto a number seven spatula and spread over the intaglio of the framework. After seating, areas of premature contact will wipe away the wax, creating what we call a show through. This is an area that can be removed with a burr and the process is repeated until no show throughs are seen. Now let's go over how to use occlude. If incomplete seating is observed on RPD, like on this case here, occlude is sprayed onto the intaglio of the RPD. Similar to disclosing wax, a show-through is detected if a premature contact exists. The metal is reduced in the area of the show-through, and the process is repeated until full seating is achieved. Now let's move on to RPD clasp adjustments. Two pliers are used for RPD clasp adjustments, the three-prong plier and the bird beak plier. The three-prong plier is used to bend a straight wire. Upon applying pressure, the wire bends towards the direction of the single prong. Now let's move on to the bird beak plier. With the flat prong towards the inside of the curve, applying pressure causes the wire to flatten. It's important to note that bending cast clasps is risky as they have a flat area. This flat area is usually towards the abutment tooth and can be seen clearly when taking a cross section of the clasp. You should know this because any adjustments should be done perpendicular to that flat plane and not parallel to that plane as that predisposes the clasp to fracture. Rot wire clasps that are round have the benefit of being able to be bent in any direction. It's important to note that bending clasps to achieve better retention should always be done by bending a clasp into a deeper undercut and not by simply making the clasp tighter around the tooth. Now let's move on to the RPD occlusal adjustments. This usually involves checking the occlusion with shim stock, marking the areas of premature contact with articulating paper, and then adjusting them to achieve ideal contact. Shimstock is used to confirm that the occlusion with and without the partial in place is identical. If the occlusion is not identical, areas of premature contact are marked with articulating paper and adjusted with a burr. Once fit and occlusion are verified, gyrolation comes next. I'll leave a video link up here for more details on gyrolation records, but generally, a record base and occlusal rim is fabricated. Usually, occlusal rims will have notches, the jaw registration is made using jaw registration material. The jaw registration material along with a record base and occlusal rim are used to mount the casts. Alley wax can also be used and is more effective in cases where jaw relation records are made in CR. As I said previously, I will leave a link up here for more details on jaw relation records. That's it for this video. We hope it was helpful and we'll see you in the next video.